is the last of his kind. All that remains of a once powerful nation. Are you serious right now, bro? Miss Keisha, Miss Keisha, oh my fucking god, she fucking dead. The Avatar. My name is Iro. Ang, Ang, me Ang, Ang, Sok Agni Key Duel. My name is Ang. General Iro. Ang, Ang. General Iro. Ang. Yin and Yang. General Iro. Ang, Ang, Dan. Hey everyone, it's Soul here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to my Middle Movie Monday Triple M series. So, for this month, I decided that in order to prepare for the Netflix live-action release of Avatar The Last Airbender, that we need to go back in time and revisit the reason why so many people think that they probably shouldn't make any more live-actions. That's right, for this month, I tortured myself for an hour and 36 minutes just so we can discuss the monstrosity that is the Avatar The Last Airbender movie. Now, I haven't watched the film since it came out back in the day, and I was a literal child. I was probably like 10 or 11 years old, and even though I didn't know anything about writing structures, formatting, pacing, or anything at all, I still remember leaving the theaters feeling disappointed in this movie. So, I'll be honest, now that I'm older and I know a lot more about the art of storytelling in film and television, I was actually really eager to see just how bad the storytelling elements are, and I wanted to kind of ask myself, how could this have been fixed? The short answer is, you can't fix it, it's absolute trash, throw the whole thing out, start from scratch, there is no redeeming this movie. There's just so many things wrong with this film, it's not even funny, it's just sad. So before we jump in, please remember to hit that like button, click subscribe to see more videos from me, and leave a comment down below. Here is your one and only warning that this video contains spoilers. All right, grab your staff, shun the demon that's possessing our beloved Appa, and let's fly in. Now, there's a lot of problems with this movie that I think so many of you guys will already know of and are just insanely obviously wrong. You have the whitewashing of the main cast of characters, the grotesque mispronunciation of the main character's name, the not-so-great acting, the benders that are seen fist-fighting instead of actually using their bending abilities, and the issue of them just trying to cram as much of season one as possible into a singular hour-and-a-half-long film. Now, aside from those obvious issues, there's four main things that I want to really point out that pull this movie down so much. That is the intro, the long scenes, the show-don't-tell rule, and the spirit world plotline. Starting off with the first one, the intro that I'm referring to in particular is the sort of introduction of the film as a whole. You have the introduction of the characters as well as the overarching plotline. It's usually no longer than the first quarter of the movie, and it includes that famous call-to-action moment that, for example, takes Frodo out of the Shire, or has Katniss volunteering at the Reaping, that moment that Triss chooses Dauntless. These sort of intro sections to the movies usually happen quite quickly because they are just setting up the events for the rest of our film to take place. But in this movie, it takes us all the way until 30 minutes before our main characters decide that, hey, we should go to the North Pole. But they didn't just wait that long to reveal their destination, because it also took them 30 minutes to realize that Aang is the Avatar. But wait, because it gets even worse, because it wasn't until 22 minutes into the film that Aang realized he was the last airbender alive. And just for context, again, the film is only an hour and 35 minutes long, so it takes them until the end of the first third of this film to give us the information of where they are trying to go and what is the whole goal in this movie. Aside from the already aimless feeling that this created for the viewers within that first third of the film, 
It also just sets up a really bad precedence for the pacing because it takes time away from future developments for character relationships, character developments, and the real thick of the plot line. And this is why all of the writing structures that I've seen so far have the intro section of a movie be contained to the first quarter of the film. Aside from the overall pacing issues that this late setup causes, it also doesn't give us a strong introduction to the personalities of our main trio. Aang's sacrifice, for example, for the Water Tribe is kind of pointless. He doesn't have any sort of connection or relationship to the village, so him turning himself in so swiftly, it isn't a testament to his personality as someone who, for example, in the show, is seen trying to protect this village full of people that he's grown to care about. This scene also doesn't grow anything in relation to Katara and Aang's relationship. They have zero bonding moments within this first section. And I know that they were trying to save screen time and cut out things and interactions with Aang and all the people in the village, but all we would have needed to get some amount of character relationship and development growing is just a quick conversation between Katara and Aang. One where, for example, she might be like, oh, I love my village so much, while she then is seen playing with kids or handing a kid, a, I don't know, an arctic flower or something. If they were to have shown some sort of bond between Katara and the village in front of Aang, and then perhaps have Aang say that he wants to stay and learn more about their village and their lifestyle, just before Sokka enters the tent saying, like, the Fire Nation is here, then at least Aang's sacrifice could have been seen as him trying to care for Katara and protect the village, since he knows that this village just means so much to her. That is just one example of what they could have done and changed to get some amount of character development going. So just in general, the first 30 minutes of this movie were probably the worst since it just failed so badly at doing its job of introducing the characters' personalities as well as setting up the catalyst that sends our characters on the pathway for the rest of their film. The second issue that I have just comes down to how this movie was filmed and produced. The scenes are very long scenes with not too many short ones intertwined between them. For example, the scene at the Earth Kingdom prison it was very long and it's made to feel even longer than what it is because there's not that many cuts within these long scenes. There's not a lot of cuts, there's not a lot of different angles to keep us as viewers attentive and on our toes. There's so many little moments in this movie as a whole where a quick little edit or cut or change in angle would have really helped some of these scenes. For example, a quick cut to Katara as she is pushing this guard instead of us watching her slowly walk over and then shove the guy. It would have just been a bit higher in tension, and I definitely think that these long scenes the way they are now is just dragging the energy down a lot, making this movie feel so much longer than what it actually is. This kind of leads into my third point, which is the show don't tell rule. We get a lot of these really long scenes or longer moments where there's just these voiceovers or these monologue speeches that are just dragged out where we just get a sort of info dump on what happened or what happened in the past. The voiceovers from Katara, I kind of feel like they are a bit pointless. We should have been seeing a lot more of those events take place rather than having her tell us the abbreviated version of what happened. For example, when the group arrive at the Northern Water Tribe, Katara states how Sokka and Yue bonded immediately. But instead of telling us that, they could have easily just shown a short scene of Sokka and Yue talking for the first time, showcase that dynamic instead of giving us just this random zoom and close-up on Sokka while Katara says that he fell for her immediately. This show-don't-tell rule is so important in any film or TV show, and it should have been followed a lot more throughout this movie because there's so many moments where we are just told things that don't make any sense or don't line up with what we are seeing on screen. Then the fourth and final thing that I want to point out is the Spirit World plotline. Now, this is going to be a bit of a preference, and while I know a lot of people will say that these scenes probably should have been cut so that they could get more screen time for the group building character relationships, I actually liked what they were trying to go for. Now, in no way were they successful and pulled it off perfectly, but the idea of changing something from the show and honing in on Aang's internal struggles of grief, loss, 
guilt and fear over everything that's happened to him, it's definitely something that could have been great to expand upon like they were trying to do in the film. However, I do think that they needed just a few more glimpses of his struggles coping in order for the final montage scene to have its greatest impact on the viewers. It's such a big moment as Aang is finally feeling his grief and letting go of the idea and the sort of guilt that he holds over the loss and the death of the Air Nomads. It's a very beautiful moment in Aang's sort of traumatic story and character development. However, it just wasn't executed as well as it should have, and therefore just ended up feeling like a bit of a waste of time, taking away valuable screen time and opportunities for other character relationships and developments. In addition to that, since I love a good confrontational moment, as it usually brings about good character developments, I wish that Aang's frustrations and feelings and struggles and difficulties coping would have spread to impact the people around him, namely Katara and Sokka. The show actually does this really well when Aang tries firebending for the first time. He's so determined to be successful and in some ways redeem himself for letting the Fire Nation destroy so many people that he actually ends up burning Katara, causing an argument from Sokka, brief problems between him and Katara, and then finally, this causes Aang future struggles and mental issues in regards to learning firebending later on in the series. And while I'm not saying that the film should have done this exact scene where Aang is trying to firebend and burns Katara accidentally, I just wish that Aang's internal struggles would have spilled over into the plotline at some point or another in the film. Also, since the movie is rated PG and it's geared towards a younger audience, I definitely feel like having a film be a bit of a lesson on grief and loss. It would have just been a great little addition to the story, but while I liked where they were going, it just wasn't executed well enough. All in all, the movie the way it is now is an actual embarrassment. I genuinely don't know how such a highly anticipated film was approved with a script that is written this poorly, but somehow it was. It's really just a shame that the writing and the directing sucked because the sets, the locations, and even the costumes, I thought they looked okay. There are some changes that I do wish they wouldn't have made, but as a whole, visually, I thought it looked pretty good. The North Pole in particular looked really pretty, especially for 2010 CGI. You could definitely tell that they had a bit of a budget, so it's a shame to see it wasted on such a poor script. But at the end of the day, this movie just has so, so many problems within its script, ranging from the unnecessary name changes, the pacing issues, the structural issues, the poor production choices, and the telling us things instead of showing us. It's for all of these reasons and so many other obvious and minor issues as well that this movie is forever shunned by the Avatar The Last Airbender fandom. I hope you guys enjoyed this month's Triple M video. If you guys like my discussion, please hit that like button down below and leave your thoughts in the comment section. While you're down there, click subscribe to see more videos from me and turn on notifications if you want to be notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you future souls next time. Bye guys!